Mobile apps. We love them. We rely on them. And when they don't work exactly the way we want every time, we delete them. If developers ship new features without fully testing them, users get the wrong order. This isn't a pizza. Can't check in for their flight on time. Come on, I have a ticket. Or get stranded downtown late at night. I just want to go home. Testing iOS apps has always been about making compromises. Take manual testing. It's slow, it's error prone, and ultimately, it delays releases. Not to mention it's about as tedious as mowing a football field with nail clippers. And iOS simulators, well, sure they're fast, but accurate? Not so much. That leaves us with just one good option for automated regression testing, a physical device farm built with real iPhones. For companies, building physical infrastructure, it's not just annoying, it's also super time consuming and expensive. Like millions on fire expensive. In today's mobile focused world, there's gotta be a better way, right? Well, don't ask me, I once failed CAPTCHA. Let's see if we can go out there and find someone who actually knows how to squash those bugs. Meet John Pearl, QA Wolf co-founder and CEO. He's the man on a mission to squash every software bug in the world the same way that I swap mosquitoes in the summertime. Ha, got you. After trying every device farm known to man, the Wolfpack has decided to build their own physical device farm for iOS mobile testing. It's bold, possibly unhinged, but bold. Let's find out why. The reason why a lot of companies end up falling back to doing manual QA is because it's much simpler to do. Even though it's slower, it's much easier to hire a manual QA team and have together a test plan, have them go through that and have the confidence that you're not shipping bugs versus automated coverage. We started off delivering this automated coverage for web apps and being able to find you know, web app bugs. Now we're expanding this coverage to be able to find bugs on other platforms. And mobile was the number one platform that kept coming up from our customers, from our prospects, in terms of where they wanted help preventing bugs. What if we do simulator testing? We could rent VMs on something like Mac Stadium or AWS has their own Mac VMs and then run simulator tests. Simulators aren't an accurate representation of what the app is gonna be like when your users are using it. A simulator is not running on the same type of hardware. The same code running on a real device is gonna perform very differently mm. than running on a simulator. So it wasn't a really good experience. We explored using the major providers, Browser Stack, Sauce Labs, AWS's device farm. We found it so difficult to use those external device farms. The amount of time it actually took to run the test and edit it and create it was so time consuming and difficult. Not only is it a big people investment in terms of time and effort and their salaries, but it's also a huge infrastructure expense. Like the cost to run mobile tests in parallel is very high. If you wanna look at like 100, 200 tests in parallel, very few companies will actually pay that because it's so expensive. If you were to use Browser Stack or Sauce Labs or AWS or any device farm, you're gonna pay for all that infrastructure to run the test. We didn't necessarily wanna build our own infrastructure. We just found it was a necessity to actually be able to deliver this coverage at scale with the high quality experience that we have for web, running them fast and then parallel and affordable to our customers. To start building our physical infrastructure, we needed speed, we needed flexibility, and above all else, we needed iPhones. Lots and lots of iPhones. But how do we go about starting this building process and where do we start building it at? John simply said, go to Oklahoma City. You know the guy with the answers. OKC, a place with big skies, bigger brisket, lots and lots of wind sweeping down the plane, and apparently QA Wolf's garage-based iOS device farm. This is Jaden Lamond, staff product engineering lead. Brilliant, resourceful, possibly powered entirely by coffee and iOS code. So this is our device farm prototype that we're working on. Currently, we have a handful of iPhones in here. We have them all connected to our system from here. Basically, we've got a couple rows of iPhones. We've got mini PC here and a USB hub. Basically, all of these phones sort of sit into these brackets, which keeps them secure. We've got cabling to this USB hub, which then goes to the mini PC. At that point, it'll go through the gateway at my house, and then from there to our platform, so you can actually connect to these phones and use them. I expected a server room, 
I got a sci-fi bunker built out of Best Buy parts and hope. This looked a little bit more like a mad scientist tinkering in a lab than an enterprise-grade device farm. Thankfully, Jaden, the genius with a soldering iron, had a plan. We've started embarking on this journey to build a physical device farm where you have rows of devices that exist in a server rack and we have the ability to control them remotely and connect them to our platform so we can run our customers tests. There's a lot of physical aspects to it of like how close can we put these phones? How many phones can we fit in one area? There's a lot of cooling concerns that we have to take into account. We have these mini PCs that the devices connect to and trying to understand how many devices can we connect to one PC? What are the bottlenecks there? We have USB hubs. So understanding, is there going to be any bottlenecks for a USB hub? Throughout the entire process, phone to USB hub to PC, where are those bottlenecks? And that's something that we have to continue to test and try to push these devices as far as we can to start kind of exposing what those bottlenecks are as well. We've kind of given it our best guess initially as far as optimal layout goes. Now now what we're going to be doing is testing that layout. Once we get the 60 devices up and running, that's when we're really going to hit it hard on the testing side to really start to run those performance tests around the devices. We anticipate the scale again within the next few months. Once we have a pretty good layout to move forward with, we're going to start taking these drawers to the data center. Jaden spent the next two months tearing up metal, unboxing a warehouse's worth of iPhones, and turning this theoretical architecture into an armed and fully operational device farm. Can't wait to see what Jaden's got in store for us today. I think he's gonna take us under the hood. So let's take a look. Last week and then getting into this week, really been working on just like expanding what we have. So initially we were just trying to get one drawer of devices up and running. Now at this point we have somewhere near, don't even remember the exact count, but somewhere near almost a hundred devices now. We're finalizing our initial drawer configuration. One of the things that we're continuing to figure out is just like how many devices can we plug into a single machine? Each group of phones will have one mini PC assigned to them. We still don't quite know, but we're still doing some testing there, but really just trying to figure out like how many devices one machine can handle. Because of the nature of what we're doing with these devices, it's very intensive streaming. Our upload bandwidth is very crucial. We actually need more upload than we do download. So just ensuring that there's not any bottlenecks there and we can support the bandwidth that we need at each level in the process. It's been so much trial and error through this whole process. Just placing things in different spots and seeing if they work, trying out different USB cables, different lengths of cables, different types of fans, trying to figure out the power for the fans and just like how to fit everything in this drawer so it's not too crowded and still continue to work efficiently. At this point, we're just gonna be replicating just that exact spec drawer after drawer. Ultimately, for the near future, I think we're gonna probably end up on around four drawers or so. So we've got three drawers of phones. Each drawer has roughly 30 phones per drawer, two USB hubs and a mini PC per drawer. We've also got fans on two of them. We've been experimenting with a couple different sizes of the fans. So we've got roughly 90 phones or so online at this point. We're trying to understand what our compute requirements are gonna be on a per device basis. We really had no idea what that is gonna be. So we kind of just had to pick a mini PC to start with. So we're still figuring that out. It's good. I feel pretty good about it. We've already started doing some initial testing with some of our customers and their applications. And so far, the whole system's working very well. Even some of our initial early adopter customers are feeling pretty happy about what we've been able to do so far. Overall, definitely excited. Running the production infrastructure in a data center is gonna be a lot better from a reliability standpoint. Being able to not worry about the breaker in my house, tripping my internet, fluctuating due to just issues with residential internet service, us having a storm and my power going out, which is 
gonna happen. Being able to just have all of that reliability from the bandwidth and the power standpoint and the data center is gonna be so much better. Everything was looking on track to scale up until... The whole thing just crashed. Basically like each mini PC has a portion of its CPU allocated to each device that runs some internal software. Those interactions were showing to be a bit sluggish with not enough CPU allocated per device. We discovered that as we had been writing tests for some of our early customers. We didn't know exactly how much we needed. We just knew that we needed more. So we decided that we'll double it, which means we got to take away some devices to be able to double it. So we're still doing some more testing now with the new configuration to just verify that things are starting to look better. QA Wolf runs on speed. Lag, it's a deal breaker, but it wasn't just the CPU dragging us down. The limitations of the physical infrastructure available in Jaden's garage were starting to hinder the phone's ability to run end-to-end -end tests. A major pivot was in order, like tear down all the drawers and rewire every single phone level of pivot. New hardware, new layout, same Jaden. Weeks of late nights, CPU debates, and a few minor existential crises later, the new configuration was born. We initially had the mini PCs and after testing, we found out that we weren't able to plug as many devices as we had thought into a single mini PC. After a lot of research around just performance in general and just cost effectiveness, we opted to go with a one use server, which will actually allow us to control at least 60 devices now. So we can control two full drawers with a single server. We've gone through several iterations. We feel pretty comfortable now with where we are and the configuration that things are. The initial set of of devices that we're looking to take to the data center is gonna be two drawers. Now that the prototype was finally locked in, it was time to move out of Jaden's garage of wonders and into a real facility. Data centers, giant bunkers full of glowing things and cold air. They're sort of like a spa, but for computers. Which came first? Oklahoma City is the host. Jaden lives in Oklahoma City. It was definitely Jaden who lived in Oklahoma City. And it happened to be a good place for us to have our data center. It's in somewhat like in the middle of the country. It's a great place. Everything that we do in the data center, we want to be able to be managed remotely. We can monitor our power draw, remotely reset outlets, access our hardware remotely. We've even been building an internal application that helps us manage our iPhones specifically. We definitely need regulated cooling at a consistent temperature without much fluctuation just to keep our hardware and electronics and devices all running at optimal temperature. I think usually around like 70 degrees, maybe a little more is pretty optimal. And so being able to have that consistency is important. We wanted to make sure that we were gonna have access to a private rack that was under lock and key. So bunking at Jaden's, it was no longer an option. The air, it's too sweaty. The weather, too stormy. And the internet, it's a buzzkill. We needed a proper home for production. One with key cards, climate control, and fewer raccoons. Enter the iPhone hotel. What makes for a good iPhone hotel? Well, let's ask Margie, the general manager of QA Wolf's selected data center. As far as security goes, we definitely take as big as measures as we can. We have a perimeter fence that goes around the entire campus, but we also have a perimeter fence that goes around the door and parking lot. And then we also have locked doors to the facility. And then there's two-factor authentication to get into the data center employees and the 24-7 armed guards. They're the only people that actually have access to those doors. It's facial recognition and access card to get into both of the man trap doors. Plus we have the security of you have an access list and if you're not on the access list and showing your state issued ID with a picture on it then we won't let you in even if you're the CEO of the company. Sorry John, rules are rules. As far as cybersecurity, we have a group of network engineers that work and manage our network. They do penetration tests, they do vulnerability scans. We go through a SOC 2 type 2 audit every year. 
we have two redundant carriers. Well, it's a blended bandwidth. So if you use that, if one carrier goes down, the other carrier will pick up the load of that if someone has a maintenance or, or something like that. And then all of our carrier stuff and our bandwidth is all on the same redundant power system and cooling system as well. As far as uptime, we're what I would call a tier three facility. So if we, for some reason, do lose AC power, we have an automatic transfer switch that automatically tells our generators to fire. The generators have diesel belly tanks. Data centers are second behind hospitals to get diesel refills. All right, this looks designed somewhat sturdier than a garage. Okay, so the garage days are over, the data center is finally live, and that infrastructure is humming. But what can this thing actually do? Well, let's turn it back to the man with the plan, John Pearl. Because we own our own infrastructure, we aren't held back by the limitations of a third party's infrastructure. Our first mobile customer needed us to test their iBeacon support in their app. This is a physical device that, I mean, an app that you use in the real world, when you walk up to certain things, different things happen in the app. That's not possible to test on other infra providers today, being able to test video uploads. But really our goal is to deliver any coverage that is required. If we run into something that we can't support, then we have that full control. We have our own mobile infra team. We have a production grade device farm at this point. We're up and running in a production setting. We're running customers in production and this is just the beginning. We've run into other like iOS use cases. iPad testing recently came up. We're starting to add in iPad support to our device farm. If you come to QA Wolf, we can guarantee you're going to catch these bugs. I'm starting to see that too for iOS and Android. That same amazing value prop of giving your team the signal and this like safety net ahead of releases. Now we can prevent those same bugs on these devices that we use all day, every day. From one garage in Oklahoma City to a global standard in iOS testing. QA Wolf engineers didn't just build iOS mobile testing infrastructure, they built confidence that gives CTOs something rare, a good night's sleep. Seriously, don't build the farm. You might end up in a garage full of USB cables, a bunch of fans you're not sure what to do with, and boxes and boxes of iPhones. Perhaps even more than a couple of different regrets. QA Wolf built a mobile iOS device farm so that you don't have to.